Okay, in this uh, video on Pythagorean Theorem, we're going to be working with feet, inches, and fractions of an inch. And again, we're going to follow the directions for uh, how to write out the homework assignments. And uh, I'm going to be grading you not just on whether you have the right answer, but um, uh, your ability to follow directions and um, write down all the things that I want you to write down. Anyway, for this first problem, uh, this is going to be a right triangle and we're going to solve for A. And our B side is going to equal 3 feet 9 and 7 eighths of an inch. And then the C side will be 5 feet 2 and 1 half inch. So knowing that I want to solve for A, I want to write down the formula for A, which is going to be the square root of uh, C squared minus B squared. The next thing is we want to plug in our numbers into both of these uh, or into this formula here. Now because we're dealing with feet and inches we want to set it up so the calculator uh, will uh, read everything in inch form. Um, and so it's important to make this square root a really long square root and we're going to use double a uh, double set of parentheses and so I'll write this out and then I'll talk about what those parentheses are, are there for so in this first one we've got C which is this dimension here we're going to take the 5 and multiply it by 12 and then add it to everything else and I'm going to use uh, decimal numbers instead of fractional numbers um, if you don't know the decimal equivalent, then you certainly can use the fraction, and then you'll just be using the ABC button on your calculator. However, um, I think uh, I think for some fractions you'll be pushing more buttons by doing that. But you know, do what works for you. Either way will work. So five times twelve plus two point five. Close parentheses, and then we're going to put that little exponent minus open parentheses and then I'm going to go ahead and insert the next one so 3 times 12 plus 9.875 close parentheses exponent close parentheses equals now that's a lot of numbers and uh, let's just review uh, the, what the parentheses are doing this the the inside, the most inside parentheses are uh, for these exponents. You want to square everything that's inside um, this set of parentheses. Same with over here. And because you've got multiple operations going on, or you've got operations going on, that's why you want to use the parentheses. Now the last, the outside parentheses, is so that the calculator knows to take the square root of everything within uh, the square root sign. So that's what those parentheses are all about and you want to make sure that you're using the double set um, in the measurement problems. Now the nice thing about writing it out like this is that now when it's time to plug everything into the calculator you don't have to do all this thinking. You just look and punch in if you try to uh, just look at this and then look at the triangle that I've got here um, and then also decide okay I gotta multiply and then I gotta convert that to a decimal that's a lot of brain power and you're more likely to make a mistake so it's best to write it out and then just punch it in okay so I'm gonna do that make sure you put punch the parentheses one more time it automatically gives it to you, gives you one but you want to add one more so now here we go and then close before you hit the X2 button minus open and then 3 times 12 plus 9.875 close X2 close enter ah I got an error alright let's see what happened um, I'm going to go back. And you could always use these arrow keys just to kind of check. So, I'm just checking. Oh, I see what I did. I put accidentally did a 
decimal instead of an add. There we go. Okay, hopefully you didn't make that mistake. Um, I got 42.4468, so I'm going to round that to a 7. That's going to be in inches. Now the rule of thumb is that if it's uh, under 48 inches, you can leave it at 42 and then just convert uh, this decimal um, to the nearest 16th. And so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to subtract 42 and then multiply by 16 and I get uh, 42 and 7 sixteenths. Now I know some of you like to convert everything to feet and inches, so that's okay. You could take 42 divided by 12 and you get three and a half feet and that's going to be uh, three feet six and seven sixteenths. So either answer would work. But notice that I wrote out the shortcut formula I plugged in all the numbers that I that were given. Uh, I let the calculator do the work. I wrote a number uh, rounded to the uh, third decimal place, and then um, I wrote up my answer in a reduced uh, fraction form. Let's look at um, another one. So in this one, we're going to solve for b, And A is going to be uh, 2 feet 6 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, C is going to be 15 feet 11 inches. Notice there's no fraction there, and that's okay. And then I've got uh, B there. I don't know what that is. So I want to write uh, B equals the square root of C squared minus A squared. And then I want to write out the really long square root sign because we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with C, which is the 1511. So write that out 15 times 12 plus 11. Close x2 minus open 2 times 12 plus 6.75. Close x2 close equals. All right, now we're going to get out of the calculator, and hopefully I will punch everything in correctly. So square root, open, 15 times 12 plus 11, close, x2, minus, open, 2 times 12 plus 6.75, close, x2, close, equals. And I got 188. 5084, so that's going to be 508. That's in inches. I'm going to just double check with this arrow key, and it looks like I got it all. That's good. Now, this is uh, this is much bigger than 48 inches, so we do have to convert this to feet and inches, and uh, don't just leave it 188 and then the fraction. Convert that to feet and inches. So. We're going to take the number that's there and just divide by 12, and we get 15.709, blah, blah, blah. That's in feet. So I'm going to write 15, subtract 15, multiply by 12 to see how many inches that represented. We're going to get 8 inches out of that. And notice that the decimal is similar to what I started with. So I'm going to subtract the 8 and then multiply by 16. And I get 8 sixteenths, which is uh, 1 half. OK. We're moving on. We're going to do one more where we solve for the C side. All right. Let's say that the A side is going to be 6 feet 2 and a half inches, and the B side will be 7 feet 4 and 1 eighth inch, and the C side is our unknown. So again, C equals square root of A squared plus B squared. Remember, to find C, that's the only one that has the plus. The other two have a minus. 
Now we're going to plug in and we're going to make it really big. So here we go. Um, A is going to be 7 times 12 plus 4.125 close x2 plus open 6 times 12 plus 2.5 close x2 close equals. All right, last time we used the calculator. Um, let's get that. We're almost done. And I get um, 115. 0.3961, so that's going to be 0.396. So 115.396 inches. And notice that's greater than uh, 48 inches, so we're going to go ahead and um, change this to feet and inches and then convert that to a fraction of an inch. And so we're going to divide uh, what's in our calculator by 12 and we get 9, 9 feet, 9.616, blah, blah, blah. So subtract the 9, and we're going to figure out how many inches that represents. You know, it looks, looks like it's a little more than half, of, a, half a foot, um, and so, uh, so maybe I'm, you know, uh, maybe around seven, 7 inches, maybe. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Um, so we're going to multiply this by 12. Ah, yes. And so we get 7 inches. And so I'm going to subtract the 7. Okay. Now 0.396, um, that's a little bigger than 3 eighths. Let's see what we get. So times 16. And we get 6.3 or 6 sixteenths. Now 6 sixteenths can be reduced to 3 eighths. So that was, that was pretty close to what I said. All right, and that is going to be our answer. Now, one thing I want to mention that I failed to mention when I was doing these problems, for all of these problems, in fact, um, the hypotenuse is always going to be the largest side. So you kind of want to make sure, like if you're solving for A or B, that they are, in fact, smaller than the C side. So it looks like the first problem works out. Uh, looks like the second problem is very close to the C side but it is less. Now one, one side note, when you have um, a, like an adjacent side to this angle um, that is very close to the hypotenuse side, um, that means that this angle is very small. And we'll talk more about this when we get into trig, but um, that was interesting that it came out that way. Now the last one, we are looking for the hypotenuse, so it has to be bigger than the other two sides, and sure enough it is. Okay, that's it.